Okay, we're ready for another lesson in the human body, and today's focus is on supplying energy. So how do we get the energy our body needs? Okay, on a cellular level, we know we need glucose, we know we need oxygen in order for cellular respiration to occur, and for ATP or cellular energy to be uh, released. However, how do we get that energy? How do we get that stuff for the cells to be able to use? That's what we're going to talk about today. So let's get started. An autotroph. Remember, that's a producer. They make their own food. So primarily that's plants, but that's some bacteria, some algae. And then we have heterotrophs, which are consumers, and decomposers, which are also consumers. Both heterotrophs and decomposers eat other organisms. Decomposers are going to decompose them, okay, but they still require another organism to get their energy. And then digestion is the process that breaks down food into smaller usable nutrients. So that stuff we need in order to survive and get energy. So a nutrient is the substance from food that is used to carry out life processes. And we have a few categories of nutrients that we're going to cover. The first one being carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are quick energy. Carbohydrates can be simple. So those molecules tend to be small, like glucose and fructose, okay? They usually taste sweet. So think of things like candy, but also natural sugars, like in fruit. Or carbohydrates can be complex, so they're bigger molecules, and some are really big. And they include things like starch, like what's in bread and potatoes. They include fiber, whole grains, also the cellulose that makes up plant cell walls. Okay, that's carbohydrates. The next category would be proteins. Proteins are responsible for, well, growth and repair are just two of the things. Um, but proteins are responsible for so much inside our body. They really are a vital nutrient. Um, all of these nutrients are. And proteins um, are, sorry, made from amino acids. Things that provide protein are meats, obviously chicken, beef, veal, fish, but also things like nuts and seeds, eggs, dairy, Okay, so you can get protein from plenty of other sources aside from animals. And then we have fats or lipids. Lipids is the sciency word for fats. Lipids are used for long-term energy storage. So not that quick energy. They're going to store energy for use later. Lipids are also used for insulation and some protection. They're used in our cell membranes. Remember phospholipids, okay, that bilayer in cells. And there are two main categories. We have saturated fats that come from animal-based sources, and they're usually solids. So that's anything that comes from chicken or beef or whatever, saturated. Unsaturated are plant-based, and they tend to be liquids and they are healthier in terms of fat. So if you're going to try to decide if I should have more saturated or unsaturated, choose unsaturated. Our next category of nutrient is vitamins. Vitamins are needed for chemical reactions and most of them cannot be made by our body, so we need to consume them in our diet. There are only four that are fat soluble, A, D, E, and K, okay? Two I'm going to talk about specifically. D is important for our bone health and K is important for clotting. Or if they're not fat soluble, they're water soluble, which is pretty much all of them, right? There's only four that aren't. And the big one I'm going to talk about is vitamin C. Vitamin C comes from things that are citrus and vitamin C is important for a lot of things, some of which include growth, repair, and functioning of our immune system. Okay, then we have minerals. Minerals are also needed for chemical reactions. I'm only going to focus on a few. One is calcium, which is present in our bones and needed for strength in our bones. It's found in milk and cheese, but if you're vegan, you can still get plenty of calcium as it's found, for example, in green leafy vegetables. Iron 
is um, important for blood. It's found in hemoglobin that carries oxygen. You can get iron from red meat, but again, that is not the only place. You can get it from beans, dried fruit, and any cereal that says fortified typically has iron added. And then water. Now this is really the most important nutrient because roughly around two thirds of our body is made up of water. We can get some of the water that we need from food that we eat. And especially if you're eating things like fruits and vegetables, think about cucumbers and watermelon high in water content. We can only survive days without water. Okay, the amount of time we can survive without water depends on the activity. So are you running a marathon or are you sleeping? And also the environment. So is it relatively cool, 60 degrees outside, or is it overwhelmingly hot, over 100? Is it excessively cold? All of those can affect um, how long we can survive without water. So drink water every day. Super important. Now let's talk about digestion. There's mechanical digestion. That's the physical breakdown and movement of food. So it happens in our mouth with our teeth and our tongue moving food around. It happens in our stomach when the stomach squeezes and contracts. And it happens in a process called peristalsis, which is muscular contractions that move food. So like this. So squeezes, the food moves down, squeezes, the food moves down, okay, squeezes, contracts, the food moves, squeezes, okay, continues in that process. It happens in our esophagus to get our food very rapidly into our stomach, but it also occurs throughout our entire digestive tract. And then we have chemical digestion, which, surprise, surprise, means chemicals break down the food. So in your mouth, saliva produced by your salivary glands, which you can see in that picture, has an enzyme that digests starch. So chew a cracker long enough, starch is sweet saliva. An enzyme is a protein that speeds up a reaction. So one of them is present in your saliva, but there are lots of them throughout your digestive tract. In the stomach, it's hydrochloric acid and enzymes. Those both chemically digest food. And then in the small intestine, where most of your chemical digestion occurs, there are lots of enzymes and that are sent from two primary organs, the liver and the pancreas. Okay, so here you can see the main organs of the digestive system as food moves through. Okay, um, you can see where there's mechanical and chemical, mechanical and chemical all the way through um, the digestive tract. Because remember that peristalsis, that squeezing, is still considered a mechanical digestion. Okay. Okay, in class, we would watch this video. I'll put a link in the description, so check it out if you want to watch it. All right, let's talk about the liver. The liver produces bile, which breaks down fat. Bile is released into the small intestine, and bile is stored in a little organ called the gallbladder. And you can see in this picture how close they are to each other. Then we have the pancreas, and look how close the pancreas right here. Okay, here's the stomach, here's the gallbladder, so that means the liver would be right here. It produces trypsin, which breaks down protein. It also makes insulin, which regulates our blood sugar. And in type 1 diabetes, you do not produce enough insulin. Okay. Then we move to the small intestine. The small intestine is where most chemical digestion occurs. It has uh, enzymes sent to it from both the liver and the pancreas. It's also where most nutrient absorption happens. And there are folds in the small intestine called villi, which help. And I'll show a picture of that. Your small intestine is not actually small. It's six to eight meters long. Okay, so that's 18 to 24 feet long. So here you can see the folds in the small intestine make this villi. Well, one is called a villus. Okay, 
and that allows more absorption to happen, okay, because there's more surface, right? All those cells can absorb nutrients. Then let's move to the large intestine. In the large intestine, water is reabsorbed, waste is compacted, so we're saving the water, and it's prepared for elimination. Now, our large intestine is full of bacteria, and most of them are super helpful. And some of them even produce vitamin K. Remember, that was important for clotting, so that's kind of fun. Um, if you take an antibiotic because you're sick, not only do you kill the bacteria for the illness that you have, you also can destroy a lot of the bacteria in your intestine. So sometimes taking a probiotic or eating yogurt can help replenish that bacteria. The last section of the large intestine is called the rectum, and that's where waste is collected here uh, before it is eliminated from the anus. Okay, so rectum is where the waste kind of accumulates, and then it will be eliminated uh, from the anus. Okay, again, I'm going to put the link to this video in my description. I highly recommend watching it. Okay. And there you have it. That is how we supply energy to our bodies. And remember, that's using the digestive system. The digestive system is going to have to work and interact with a whole bunch of other body systems to ensure that all of the cells in our body get the nutrients that they need.